this morning as we move into this worship service, the first worship service of 2023, we will hear from the prophet Isaiah. And the words of Isaiah are words for our coming year and our time together this morning. Hear this, the word of the Lord. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring up, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastland and their inhabitants. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God, in this moment, let us uh, draw ever closer to you in this hour uh, through word and song and gathering and connection. Just spend more time with you that is real and substantive. And that we're different leaving here than when we came in. In your name and for your sake we pray. Amen. Well, you know, it, it's New Year's Day. And from what I understand, this kind of sequence of events of Christmas falling on a Sunday and the New Year's Day falling on a Sunday will, ha will not happen again for another 11 years. Um, so what does moving forward into a new year look like? maybe for you, for us together. Uh, for a lot of people, a lot of individuals, moving into a new year is filled with uh, a resolution or resolutions to do something new, different, uh, very popular. Losing weight, uh, quit smoking, quit drinking, start a new hobby, exercise, and all of these are good and noble pursuits. Uh, but more often than not, we tend to find ourselves asking when we make these resolutions and we come to uh, New Year's Day, uh, in a few weeks we go, what happened? Somewhere in January uh, of the new year, all the resolve and enthusiasm we had when we came and entered the new year tends to wane. It, it wears off. And the resolution we had for the resolution is gone. And somewhere around the 1st of February, many of us, I know I've, I've been there before, many of us say, attempting to cope, well, there's always next year. For a family of God, a church moving forward into a new year might look like increased attendance. I mean, what better goal to have uh, for uh, a new year than increased worship attendance? I had a church member one time tell me, a very faithful, you know, person, and, and so uh, I, I, I valued his words uh, greatly, and, he, and we were chatting one, one afternoon, and he said, uh, James, I've, I've got a way, a surefire way, guaranteed to up, to up attendance in church. Well, uh, you know, I, I was all ears. He said, the best way to increase church attendance is have more people attending. Okay. As much as a pastor and staff and servants work to make worship meaningful and engaging, and I tell you, the folks here, the, the servants and the staff here that, that I've worked with in the four years I've been here are, are some of the best, if not the best, I've ever worked with. The choice is still yours. I can't make you do anything. For you to come to worship, to be here, to be present, that's your choice. To open the computer, look on your phone, your iPad, and go to the appropriate platform and dial into worship, tune into worship. That's your choice. You choose. Attendance is not what it used to be. And I think that's part of the struggle. We have tended to gauge worship attendance by who we see in the pew. I mean, that's been what we've followed forever and a day. You see a lot of people in the pews? Oh, all right. 
So you don't see a lot of people in the pews. You know, it just it just just kind of what you see. But when we weren't able to meet, and digital ministry exploded, and uh, media platforms became the, a new avenue to offer worship and share worship. Attendance is not what you see. Attendance is who's in the pew, who's here in person, but also who's online. There's a lot of people that worship every Sunday faithfully that are online. We've got people that worship with us every Sunday four or five states away. How we gauge it has changed. For a family of God, uh, a church moving forward into the new year might look like, well, in the 80s, uh, what it would look like is how many people were on the membership roll. You know, uh, and, and I graduated high school in 1988 and uh, started, uh, once I, I experienced a call to ministry, I started to, to hang out with pastors more and more and would hear conversations uh, you know, like, well, you know, it's, 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 it's who you have on the roll. Uh, it's, it's the number you have on the roll. That's the big thing. You know, you got to hear a conversation like this. You know, pastor, some of tell me about your church. Well, I have 1,200 on the roll. Ooh, 1,200 on the roll. Yeah, only 100 of them come on a regular basis, but I've got 1,200. Ooh, 1,200. You know, that's a big deal when you got 1,200 on the roll. Um, in the 90s, it changed. You know, what was moving forward in the new year? What did it look like? Well, you got, you got to be building something, you know. Uh, a, a new sanctuary, a gym, an outhouse, a family life center. You got to be building something. You just got to be building something. What? I don't know. Just build something. That's moving forward. You know, just build something. Um, in the early 2000s, um, moving forward in the new year, uh, changed a bit. It became the AWA, the average worship attendance. That was the figure that uh, was what moving forward looked like. One church I know of had 425 on the roll, but 750 in attendance. That's remarkable. You know, what's going on there? And now that has changed here in the, I guess, the late 2000s, going into the 2020s. Uh, the metric, the gauge that is used is what is a church doing to impact the community in which that church is located? How is that church making a difference in the community where it resides? Is the, is the community, is Marion better because First Marion is here? Is Smith County a better county because First Marion is a part of it? That's the metric that's used now. Instead of a resolution, I would encourage us, let's give some reflection uh, to the wise words of someone who knew God and gave words of God to the people. And it's in those words, those words of the prophet Isaiah, that there is the potential for 2023 to be a year that is remarkable. The prophet Isaiah speaks to the promised deliverance of the Jewish people from their Babylonian captivity. Isaiah wrote between uh, the mid-700s to early 600s B.C., and Isaiah was primarily called to offer prophecy to the kingdom of Judah. Israel, the, the nation, had split into Israel to the north and Judah to the south. Uh, Judah was going through uh, a, a difficult time. They, they were times where they were, they were faithful, they were on it, they were doing what God wanted them to do. And then there were times they were just like, nah, we're going to do our own thing. Um, Judah was threatened by the, the kingdoms of Assyria and Egypt. Large, large, powerful kingdoms in the day. And those, those two 
countries, Assyria and Egypt, threatened to destroy Judah, but God spared them because of God's mercy. The book of Isaiah reveals God's judgment and salvation. God is holy and cannot allow sin to go unpunished. And because Judah is going their own way, they're turning from God, this brings judgment on Judah. But also in those words of judgment come words of mercy and grace. If Isaiah is one of the largest books of the, of the Bible. It, it's, it's, it's dense. It's good reading. But, but you've got to stick with it. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of good things in there. Uh, but you'll you read these proclamations or these, these, you know, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. And Isaiah will, will lay out what God says, and God says to Judah. That, you know, you've, Judah, you've done this and you've done this. You've turned away. You've surrendered worship of me for aligning with these folks. And so this is what's going to happen. And you're not going to like it. It's not going to be good. Mind you, that's my paraphrase. That's not exactly in a translation. But then at the end of that, you know, but know this, Judah, I love you. And even though judgment comes, I'm still your God and you're still my people. Always, always in Isaiah. Always, all through the Old Testament, that is the message. Because of His mercy and His promises to Israel, God will not allow Israel to the north or Judah to the south, will not allow them to be destroyed. And what ultimately that judgment is going to do is bring about restoration and forgiveness and healing. More than any other book of the Old Testament, Isaiah focuses on salvation that comes through the Messiah that God will send. Through the Messiah, Israel will be a light to the nations. And that light pointing the way to God and pointing to who God is and how God acts. Isaiah's words, The former things have come to be, and new things I will do. The prophet instructed the people that by seeing the former things come to pass, which had been previously spoken by the Lord, what God has done, because they knew that God had said, I'm going to do this. I will deliver you from Egypt. And He did. And because of that, knowing that, that God said it and God kept His word and God delivered the Hebrew children from captivity in Egypt, because of that, knowing that, and knowing that God always makes good on His word, knowing that and what God has said, you will be my people, you will be a light to the nations, knowing that, it bolsters the faith of Israel. They're like, maybe a tough time, but we can count on this. We know because God is God. And when God makes a promise, God keeps it. There is that sense within this text that God is reliable and merciful. But also, Isaiah is saying to the people, remember not the former things. Don't think, well, hey, being taken out of Egypt as slaves, what could, what could you do to top that? Isaiah is saying, don't, don't just focus on that alone. Don't remember that and say, that's it. Understand God is about to do a new thing, and it will blow your mind. Isaiah says, respectfully, forget the former things. And God says, look what I'm about to do. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. God is creative. God is a creative God. He's always doing something new, like saving, intervening, answering prayers, working miracles. And a new song, as we hear it and as we read it, it doesn't have to be a newly composed worship song. We don't have to think literally. I mean, we can, 
How blessed is a community of faith in the world of worship when people write new worship songs and they bless others to know about God? A new song is a fresh expression, can also be, and more often than not, a fresh expression of praise and thanks. It's a way that we are relating and connecting to God. One that seeks to connect with God in a very real way. A new song springs from the heart of a follower who has been a follower who has been just struck by this awe and the wonder of God and who God is and how God acts. And they're so filled up with, oh, I, I, I want to serve, I want to do, I want to engage, I, I want to I connect with God in a very real way. It just, it, just, it just bursts from within. Couldn't contain it if they tried. We sing a new song when we take hold of a relationship with Jesus and we go all in committed, dedicated, devoted. Our fundamental focus as a family of God, as a church, is on the person and work of Jesus. Now, before we get into anything like doctrine or practice, worship or mission efforts, before we, before we start talking about style or substance, we must start with Jesus. We understand that we are gathered to be sent. We got a mission. And it's a big one. And it's in the following of Jesus when we follow and when we engage who we are, how we are, what we do, what we say, what we even think is revolutionized. As Leonard Sweet puts it in I Am a Follower, the heart of Christianity is not a cause, but it's a person. It's not so much about rituals or rites as it is relationship. It's not about following a program or theological platform but it's learning to love a person people sweet says jesus is both message and messenger to know the gospel is to know him to know the gospel is to know jesus who is the good news Here's the thing. We're not commissioned to go start a new ministry or new outlets and all that. We are commissioned to continue the ministry that Jesus started over 2,000 years ago. We don't go from scratch. We pick up what's been done in that tradition and we carry it forward. We make Jesus' way our way individually and together. And as we live and we serve, we're continually being molded and shaped into better and better followers. So it is, together and individually, as we seek that relationship with Jesus, to be first, we are last. To be greatest, we will be least. To find ourselves, we lose ourselves. To be exalted, we are humble. We believe we are called and sent, and we express through actions and words the good news of Jesus Christ to the people here in Smith County, where we work, where we live, our families and our friends. Church is not just activity and meetings. It's not just a once a week gathering. Church is not programs. 
in all those things that are a part of our life together, it is life-changing work and efforts, your life and mine. It's changed. And we seek others for their lives to be changed as well. Following Jesus, the theme of our year together is serve and learn and grow. Take following seriously as the most serious thing that we can take seriously. Christmas has come and so many of us would like to have that feeling, that, that meaning, that touch point of Christmas just carry with us through the year. Howard Thurman wrote The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, to the work, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Such is appropriate for a worship on New Year's Day. It touches on themes of a baby born in Bethlehem is God with us as us. Three wise men from the east, pagans, who came through what they had learned and discerned. They came to worship the king, not a king, the king, because the, the king had been born. Touches on things like epiphany. As one, as one wise old pastor told me one time, he said, it's the aha of the soul where we get it in Jesus we, we get Jesus is the Savior He is Lord and we do anything anything to be in relationship with Him for followers of Jesus the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing and the main thing is Jesus I've come to start envisioning our 2023 in our life together under this theme, care, connect, and claim. We will seek to care for people. COVID's done much to fracture that sense of community that we had. People are in life situations dealing with a lot. A lot of folks feel isolated. We can be and should be a community that offers care. This is everything from like you know, contacts, Visits, lay visitation, which is off to, and to a good and great start, doing great work. Care is in casseroles. Methodists are good at casseroles. Bringing a casserole to somebody and saying, here, hope this helps, that's care. If there was a cookbook of nothing but Methodist casseroles, it would be the number one bestseller for between now and I don't know when. We're good at it. It's leaning to a strength. It's the basics of lending a hand. Offering a hand up to people. We will seek to connect. Connect more with our community. We as a church that makes a difference. We answer what Love at Weems asks, if the church closed today, if your church closed today, would anybody miss it? Yes, they would. There is much, much by way of connecting with people who are in recovery, folks who are dealing with homelessness, and folks who are the unchurched. We will seek to claim folks. Folks have drifted away. Find not attending a whole lot easier than attending. Finding, you know, 
just not doing anything a lot easier than engaging and trying to be a part of something. But people are part of this community. And we will seek to lay claim to them and reach out to them in healthy and meaningful ways. As we engage and care and connect and claim, there will be more definition to each. Because as, we, as we're in the doing of it, it'll flesh out more. We'll understand it more. In Jesus, we have direction. We have a way to do and be in this world. Following Jesus means having part of Jesus. It means stepping out, and in some cases, stepping up. It means caring about people that are hard to care about. It means we consider our behavior. Jesus is our example. It means we want God. We hunger. It means we seek and find courage to do things that we are called to do. It means being open to the new. It means change for us in the way we see things here at First Marion. We don't just live here, go to church here. It's not just something we do. Here, this place, this community, we serve, we worship, we seek to make disciples. We are on a mission, God's mission, and it's a big one. The new year, the new song is relational. It is one of love and trust, loving and trusting God, loving and trusting Jesus. We move forward into the new year, and the words of Isaiah 42 become our words as a family of God. Sing to God a brand new song. Sing His praises all over the world. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, indeed, uh, we, seek, we seek to sing a new song. Bless us and teach us the tune so that we sing it well and sing it all year long. In the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus, it's us to come and follow Him, we pray. Amen. Friends, we're invited to embrace this new year to care, connect, and claim, and sing a new song. Friends, let us go into this new year. Seek Jesus, follow Jesus, serve Jesus, love Jesus. Sing a new song. Sing a new song to all the world. Sing a new song. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.